welcome back to another video. This is going to be my quick unscripted review of Pokemon Legends Arceus. Now, I have not done everything in the game that you can do. Um, I've beaten the main game, I've beaten the post game, and I am now in the post post game, which is essentially completing the Pokédex. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to be, this is going to be spoiler free, so I'm just going to be in this main area here, and I've got no spoilery Pokemon, I've like got, got Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, which uh, are the main three legendaries of Sinnoh, so you could probably have guessed that you'd be able to catch them in this game, so I don't consider them as spoilers, and I've just got like Garchomp, Alakazam, and a Luxray with me, and also, um, before I start here, um, catch a Luxray in this game, like, uh, quick tip, catch Luxray, just do it. Um, if I go down here, this is the first area in the game, you go down here, and this is even part of the tutorial to catch a Shinx, catch a Shinx and use it, because, um, Luxray gets Thunder Wave, and, uh, Thunder Wave is the most reliable method of, uh, um, inflicting a status condition, and you and you will want that because you will be catching a lot of Pokemon. That I mean, seriously, a lot. Um, because if I quickly just open my decks, and hopefully I'm not on a page with spoilers. Yeah, this is a spoiler-free page. Um, you for each individual Pokemon you have like a list of uh, research to do. So for Teddy Ursa here you've got uh, number caught, number of, heavy, of heavy specimens caught, number you've caught without being spotted, number defeated, uh, times you've uh, seen it use baby doll eyes, and that doesn't have to be a wild Teddy Ursa, you can catch Teddy Ursa then have it use baby doll eyes and that will count. Um, Times you've given it food, which yeah, that's that can only be done to a wild teddy ear, so, and time and the number of teddy ears so you have evolved. Um, and uh, when uh, so you start off at research level one, and I believe that's if you've caught it once, or maybe if you've just seen it anyway. And then basically, with each like number of these that you get, so like you can see here, af after the um, number caught, there's a six. Then there's one, two, three, four. I've caught six Teddy Ursa, and that's six points to the completion, I believe. And then, no, oh, no, maybe I'm wrong. So yeah, no, actually, I misunderstood this. So it's like four, five, six, uh, well, eight, nine, ten. No, no, I'm not 100% sure on how the research level or completion level really works with these, because I'm... I'm just not 100% sure right now, but um, basically the more of these tasks you do, the the more research, the higher the research level, and um, you will want to do this, because firstly, once you've reached research level 10, uh, which is a complete Pokédex, um, that Pokémon will have an increased chance of be becoming shiny, and that if you perfect the Pokédex entry by uh, and in this case with Teddy Ace, I would have to catch 15 of them. I would have to uh, catch 10 heavy. I would uh, need to catch 10 without being spotted. I would need to catch. Uh, I would need to defeat 15 of them. I would need to see them. One of them use baby doll eyes 40 times. I would uh, need to give 10 of them food and evolve three of them to perfect this Pokédex, and that will give it another shiny odds boost. And you can do that for every single Pokemon in the Pokédex. Um, yeah, and yes, I have done a little bit of research um, for this video. Um, oh, yeah, video. Um, and maybe I might do a live stream, uh, just a re relaxed, laid-back live stream, just like me completing Dex entries. Um, oh, that's a spoiler that I did not mean to do. Oh, uh, it's just getting worse. Anyway, um, that, that was a little bit of a spoiler there, sorry, because um, uh, I forgot that um, if you go up to the wall, you can summon um, that Pokemon straight out of the Pokeball to so you can ride it. Um, 
That can be a little bit annoying sometimes, like then, but it's not the way. It also happens when you walk up to trees, um, and I will probably not get too much into the ride Pokemon because I consider them, apart from weirdy uh, spoilers, because. Um, I do not believe all of them have been officially revealed, or if like people are trying to re re uh, main spoiler free. So yeah, um, did, you didn't get. I just did it again, didn't I? God damn it! Um, anyway, uh, ignore my stupidity there. Um, So yeah, um, the main gameplay of this is battling and catching Pokemon um, and uh, basically completing the uh, Pokedex um, and uh, the more research data you collect for Pokemon the more points you'll get and then you like uh, rank up and then when you rank up you get new crafting recipes, you get um, you know, like new items and stuff. Oi! The bear, sorry, the bear's just eating this pitch. Um. So yeah, uh, that that is the main gameplay of. Huh. Anyway, uh, that is the main gameplay. Just like battling and catching Pokemon. Um, and you saw the floats earlier, but this uh, uh, Breezel here has red glowing eyes. That means it's an alpha Pokemon. These Pokemon are, are a higher level and uh, um, you know, a lot stronger. And yeah, this one's probably not going to be super strong. Also, uh, if you can try to uh, get a back strike, because that just gives you a big advantage during the battle, it gives you one free turn. So for this I can just like Thunder Wave for my free turn. So yeah, like this is level 25. Bearing in mind this is the first area of the game. So level 25 is quite high of level. And then just throw a Pokeball. And yeah, uh, the and something that I kinda like is the fact that the Pokeballs don't wiggle, they just do a little uh, jump and then uh, they're either not caught or they are caught and I don't know if the size of the jump matters because I uh, do know that the that is like a small jump a medium jump and a big jump that the ball can do but I don't know if that has any um, I don't know if that's like um, influenced in any way by um, how likely or whether the Pokemon is to be caught, like a smaller jump would be more likely or a bigger jump would be less likely. I don't know if that's true, but um, definitely could be a thing, I don't know. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter that much because uh, you're either going to catch it or you're not. Oi, Rooney! You, you might be a I don't want to have to replace your bleeding perch because he decided to destroy it. Anyway. Um, so yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, even in the. Uh, just to show you how powerful um, these uh, Pokemon. these Alpha Pokemon can get. So, again. Uh, let me just quickly remind you, this is the first area of the game. Most Pokemon around here are like level 5, um, 5 or 10. Um, also, pick up all these uh, medicinal leaks, uh, as many of these medicinal leaks as you can, because they are very useful throughout the game. I'm just going to send in Palkia for this. So there's a Rapidash here. Uh, this is a fixed um, alpha Pokemon spawn. Now this Rapidash, alpha Rapidash, will always spawn here. 
Um, and if you wanted, you could probably shiny hunt this if I remember correctly, but you'd have to look up a spe specific guide for that because I've not memorized all the shiny hunting rules. And all the legendary Pokemon in this game are shiny locked, so you can't shiny hunt any legendaries nor your starter. Um, which is a little bit of a shame. It would be nice to be to at least be able to shiny hunt your starter. Um, but have a look at this level. Level 40. Bearing in mind... The, again, this is the first area of the game. You'll only be like level 10 or 15, and this is a level 40 Raptor. Like, yeah, these alpha Pokemon can get real strong. Especially later on in the game. Um, oh, and something that's really cool is that you can get Drifloom here. Really early in the game if you want a Drifloom. Not super hard to find. Yeah, like this Drifloon is level four. Um, and I would I would also recommend like um, always oh, like harvesting the trees near you. They draw like berries and apricorns and stuff I can use for crafting and they're really helpful. And the rustling trees have Pokemon in them. But there's uh, like 90% of the time it's just like a bear me or a worm uh, from my experience. Like, I have, I can't remember off the top of your head but I do believe I have seen non bear me or worm Pokemon emerge. from the trees, but I can't remember off of my head um, what they were if, if I have. Anyway, I guess I would a bit, be a little bit of spoilers. Um, yeah, and also uh, there's two types of tumble stone that you can get. Definitely grab them when you can because they'll be. Um, well, sorry, there's three types of tumble stone. And definitely grab them when you can because they're used to make the three main uh, types of Pokeballs, which I'll probably go into in a minute when I talk about crafting. But yeah, when you're running around, always just, like pick up whatever you can find. Um, because chances are it's probably going to be useful. And also harvesting fruit from trees and the, the um, tumble stone gets your Pokemon a little bit of EXP, which is always nice. And this game can get difficult um, at times. I've not had to specifically go out and grind, except for like in the post game. Um, even then, in the post game, I had to re completely rebuild my team, then grind. Um, and something that you might want to take into consideration is uh, whether or not you want to balance your team out with like poking. Like something that I did, I would not um, really um, recommend is that when I was playing through this. Um, I uh, had three Pokemon that were like main staples of the team that I used uh, for like two for battling and one for capturing level. That was like, uh, you know, uh, my Luxray, this Luxray, and like uh, my starter and a couple of other Pokemon. Yeah, you know, one or two other Pokemon. Anyway, basically, I had three Pokemon to basically deal damage and, uh, um, like, I don't know. Uh, uh, to deal damage and uh, um, cat and Luxury was here to help me catch Pokemon. And again, Luxury is really good because it has it gets all the Fang. Well, I don't know if it gets all the Fangs, but it gets Thunder, uh, Thunder Fang, Ice Fang, and like Bite. So you could like you can definitely do a lot of uh, damage to a lot of Pokemon with those moves. Anyway, um, and then last three I had as. Um, Pokemon to just like gain EXP and evolve. Um, 
and yeah they are and I the reason why I would not recommend that um, is because when I um, you know had uh, like some battles they were actually quite difficult because half my team was pretty much unusable and uh, um, yes uh, like I said the, one of the main goals of this game is completing the de Pokemon decks but and you and in most games you do need to like evolve Pokemon to fill out the decks but it seems like in this game they put a much bigger emphasis on actually catching the Pokemon instead of just grinding them up to evolve them and it, uh, uh, it, from my experience you can pretty much catch shush noisy bed you can pretty much catch any Pokemon wild like Fully evolved Pokemon, mid-stage Pokemon, I've been able to catch a lot of them just in the wild, just roaming around. Um, and it, yeah, uh, so I really wouldn't to recommend that, like if you need to like evolve Pokemon to for the like dex entries and stuff, just save that for the post-post game. Um, and you'll know the post-post game after you've um, done the final battle at to uh, be a pillar um and then you pretty much just got one thing left to do which is complete the pokédex um because yeah like i said uh you can pretty much just catch any stage of any pokemon now um i was not expecting to run into one of these uh during this this is a will of the wisp you will uh at one point in the game get a um cutscene and a mission to collect all of these things um and I believe this is how you uh, you will eventually get Spirit Tomb. I've not completed it yet, as you can see. Um, uh, and oh yeah, and as you can see, like po wild, wild Pokemon will attack you, and you have a dodge button to dodge the attacks. But I think pretty much anybody that knows anything about this game knows about that by now. Um, Something that's really cool is it, oh, I'll do it here, why not, um, is that, uh, well actually, uh, here will be fine, yeah, yeah, right, so you can throw out your Pokemon, oh, you know, there we go, so if you hold your Pokeball and if there's a little Pokemon head, Pikachu head with a little music note there, you can throw out your Pokemon and just have them out. Out and the dirt. Uh, they'll make noises. Oh, I did not want... How the hell was that close enough to battle the Starly? Kill it. Now I have to get them all out again. So you can have these Pokemon out. And if you throw them on the ground like this, they'll just like stand around. And they'll look at you, and if you get too far away or go into a Pokemon battle, then they'll come back to you. And then you can have them all out like this. So if you like make YouTube videos and stuff, you can have them all out like this. And then just press the capture button whenever you want. And then you've got that screenshot for later when you, and you can use that as a thumbnail if you'd like. Uh, if you make YouTube videos, but something that's really cool about this oh, is that if you throw a Pokemon out and then you throw a Pokemon at that Pokemon, they will interact. And then you can throw another Pokemon at that Pokemon, and then all three of them will interact. And then you can throw another Pokemon in that Pokemon, and then all of them will interact. And another, 
And another. Then you just got like a, the whole gang just interacting and talking with each other. It is really cool. No, why do I keep pressing the one? And then you can just return them all to the ball. And continue on with your day. Yeah, and the, um, some Pokemon do have actually have unique interactions. Like, um, when I just had Dialga and Palkia out at the same Well, actually, I can show this off real quick. So I just threw out Dialga, and I threw Palkia out at it. And then, uh, I don't know if I'll show it off here, but when I threw them out at one time, they actually started like hitting each other and fighting. I don't know if they're going to do that now. You going to show off for me? No, they just seem to be yelling at each other. Yeah, they just seem to be yelling at just yelling at each other. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I want to talk about the graphics real quick. Well, um, if you go uh, to my live stream of like my initial impressions of uh, Legends of Arceus, um, I was like talking about how while it's not like groundbreaking or anything for a video game to look this good, it is sort of groundbreaking for Pokemon because this is. So far, this is the best looking Pokemon game, not um, factoring in Pokemon game games like um, um, uh, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee and the, the Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pill that have an entirely different like art style because th this is the better looking at like the Pokemon games that uh, aren't really like cartoony like uh, those two like Pokemon Sword and Shield uh, um, and obviously the 3DS games in the Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, Aura, Dex and Y um, anyway expected to look at least better than, uh, than uh, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon seeing as how that's a 3DS game um, but while I do while I am saying saying that it is the best looking Pokemon game and I really do like how it does look uh, um, there are a couple of problems. Pop in, pop in can be a little bit of a problem, but I want to emphasize here a little bit. Like you could, you can, if you look in the distance, you can see like some stuff popping in. But um, bearing in mind, when you're playing this, you're not often going to be looking out in the distance. You're probably going to be looking closer to you at the wild Pokemon. So, uh, more times than not, you're not really going to notice popping um, all that too much because, you, you, like I said, you're going to be keeping your eyes closer to your player um, to look look out for, like, Pokemon and stuff that has just, like, spawning in. Um... So it's not, in my opinion, it's not too much of a, the problem isn't really that much of a problem. There has been a couple of times that I have noticed that, um, while just playing through this, that in the background I have just like noticed like, um, Pokemon load in, and um, what they do is that they have Pokemon load in from fairly far away so that you can see them, but the problem is it uh, when they up until a certain point, they're, up until you get to a certain t distance to them, they will be at a very low frame rate. So sometimes you may notice a Pokemon in the background that's at a really low frame rate. I did, why did I use that? that was, oh, oh well, whatever. Well, anyway, that's at a really low frame rate. And I don't know if I'll be able to 
show it off because it is like I said I've only managed to notice it a couple of times and it is a fair distance that you're not like I said you like it like I said you are going to be keep for the most part you are going to be keeping your eyes closer to your trainer character so you're not really going to notice like things in the, off in the distance I don't know if that's going to catch. Well, obviously, I don't know, but. Nope. Anyway. Um, but yeah, it's most notable with flying types, actually. So if I just walk away from that Staravia really slowly, we should eventually see its frame rate drop. Frame rate drop. Yeah, there we go. You can see that it re has a really low frame rate right now, but that is a fair distance to be. Uh, that is a really that is that is a uh, very good distance in my opinion. Because, like I said, quite often you are going to be looking that far away. Um, for the most part, you're going to be looking close to your trainer, like I said earlier, with the pop in. Um, but it's only really that notice noticeable with flying types because they have wings. Like, is, if it was something like a Starly that far off, you wouldn't really notice it because you're not seeing the wings flap or anything. Um, yeah, um, if if those sound like they're going to put you off, then yeah, nothing else I can say if, if that sounds, yeah, but in my personal opinion it's not that bad because like I said I only ever noticed it a couple of times while playing through this game so it's not something that's super intrusive in my opinion um But yeah, anything else I want to talk about the main game? Hmm. Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything about the main gameplay to really talk about. Like, everything else is quite good. Like, you'll sometimes notice a few glitches like... Oh! If I go to my album real quick, I managed to get a quick picture of this, but uh, one time my Alakazam did end up buried in the snow. Now this is the worst example of this, and I've only seen this happen once. But yeah, that is a little bit of a glitch. And obviously it's not going to be perfect. Like, um, something you have to bear in mind with this game is that this is the first game that Game Freak has ever made in this like kind of o more open world kind of style. So, um, they're obviously not going to get it perfect on their first try. But, seeing as how this is their first like try at this style of game, I honestly really do like it and it's probably, no. It's probably one of my favourite Pokemon games. Like, it's not my all-time favourite. Like, my all-time favourite would have to be Platinum tied with Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Um, but I really love those games because, in my opinion, they are well, just the best Pokemon games of all time. Um, Heart Gold and Soul Silver are the best remakes, and the, the um, Platinum is the best third version of a game because it adds the most improvements and the, the yeah, it's just the best in my opinion. But um, for a Pokemon, but I would definitely put it right off off the top of my head. It would go Platinum. 
Hard Gold, Soul Silver, number one. Number two, probably be Diamond, Pearl, Brilliant Diamond, and Shining Pearl. Um, number three would be. Probably be Legends Arceus M4. Oh no, Sword. Mm, actually, Sword and Shield would be tied second place with uh, Diamond Pearl, Brilliant Diamond, and Shining Pearl. Sword and Shield at, at number two. Um, then Legends Arceus at number three. Well, because I do like this a little bit less than um, Sword and Shield. For couple of reasons. Firstly, I just really liked a lot of the new Pokemon that Sword and Shield brought in. Um, and while the new regional forms of Pokemon that are in this game, I do really like. Uh, I just, uh, I also like the characters in Sword and Shield a little bit more, like, um, Uh, well, I don't like Hop, and I do definitely think, I can't remember her name, but I do think the rival in this game is better than Hop. I, I just like Sword and Shield a little bit more because, you know, they, oh, well, they do, they do have more Pokemon, it does have more Pokemon, which is obvious, which is an upside, like, I'm not going to be sitting here and just like, oh, I don't need, I, I don't need every Pokemon in a Pokemon game, but it is nice to have more Pokemon. And Sword and Shield does have more Pokemon, and, uh, um, yeah, it is, um, I, I can, I just, I think I like it a little bit more. Maybe because that's because it had, it's had time to grow on me, and the, the I really did like the DLC. And mind you, I didn't finish Crown Tundra because I got burnt out on Pokemon at that point, and I've been meaning to go back to actually do Crown Tundra, um, This, because how different this is, and it, uh, just how much fun it is, it is easily, I don't know, yeah, I think number three, because I think then would be like Auras, and X and, and then X and Y, then Gen 3, I, I'm, not, I'm not, I wasn't a particularly big fan of like the original Game Boy Advance games, cause I don't have it. I don't really have any strong feelings for the original Game Boy Advance, Ruby, Sapphire, or Emerald. Um, because I didn't really play them when I was younger. I And then, and same for Gen 1 and the original Gen 2. Um, while I did play Gen 1 and Gen 2 when I was younger, um, I don't particularly have any strong feelings for them either way. Um, and then... Uh, then it gets difficult because I don't know which one I dislike more, Gen 5 or Gen 7 because they were both kind of bad, like Gen 5 had like um, a half-baked uh, um, villain team with like very shaky motivation and the plot wasn't interesting and the characters weren't interesting I just hated everything and did they and did black and white one well actually black and white two I quite like so I'd probably put black and white two on par with all us um and X and Y um but in uh black and white one I just really did not like black and white one it just bad um, but, um, Sun and Moon, well, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon didn't make, fix Sun and Moon's problems, and they sort of just made it worse, because my main problem with Sun and Moon was, um, they were just, like, drawn out and boring, and it was just, like, drawn out boring, and I just really couldn't, didn't care, and it would be, it was just painfully dull, essentially, um, and... Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon basically made that worse. Um, they added new characters which didn't, which were not interesting, did nothing interesting, and just popped in every now and again just to draw out uh, the uh, playtime. And my God, it was just at that point it was even more painfully boring to play. And it's just like, oh, 
which which one do, would I put lower? The games that I that I just have a strong feeling towards, or the games that uh, I just have that pains me that that you know I have no, I have such an opinion lack of opinion on them. It pains me like. I didn't have to go say that I like Sun and Moon and Sun and Ultra Moon a little bit more than um a little bit more than um black and white for the sole reason that um uh, Sun and Moon uh, introduced Mimikyu, which is my favorite Pokemon of all time, where my favorite Pokemon in um in uh, black and white. Introduced in black and white was um, like Zorak, um, Golik, and Chandelure, which I do. Uh, after them, Chandelure is probably my favourite. I still don't like it enough to really save save it from excuse me, to save it from being worse than Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Um, So yeah, that's my basic ranking for the game. Also, let's go. I wouldn't. I don't really think I should compare Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee to the other games because they are so different. But I do. I did really enjoy Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, and I, I would probably also put them on like par with All Ads and X and Y and Black and White too. Because they, they, you know, they're good games, but we not really say that um, they're my favourites or anything. Um, yeah. Now back to this game. Um, something uh, that you know most people probably already know. Is that you can craft stuff in this game? You know, you can craft balls. So these three, so there's three different like categories of balls. Really, there's the poke, the, the base like pokeball, great ball, and ultra ball, which use an apricorn. Each use one apricorn, and they you and the pokeball uses one tumble stone, as well as the great ball and the ultra ball uses two tumble stone and the great ball uses an iron trunk while the ultra ball uses two iron trunks and then you also have the um, more specialized balls you have the uh, heavy ball the lead le leaden ball and the uh, gigaton ball um, basically these don't these are quite heavy so they don't go very far but if you can get up behind a Pokemon and it uh, um, hits them and then uh, like without being noticed and it, you know uh, it's uh, they are actually quite good at um, catching Pokemon and then you have Feather Ball, Wing Ball and a third one of these which I have not unlocked yet called the Jet Ball which they um, go further and it, uh, they're a bit faster so and they use Apricorns Sky Tumble Stone and Iron Chunks, and these use Apecorns, Black Tumble Stone, and Iron Chunks. Um, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't satisfying uh, to get a, a heavy ball or a leaden ball or, or a gigaton ball or whatever ball you want to use on this on the particular Pokemon. And just sneak up behind them and hit them in the back with it because that is actually really satisfying and yeah now watch this oh bonk and he's caught Yeah, it, it is quite satisfying to just get behind them, whack them on the back.
Honestly, I, I do think they're probably my... I do probably prefer the heavy balls to the lead balls because, like I say, it is just satisfying to get up behind them and whack them in the back. And easily catch them. If I can press the right button. I instinctively want to press plus to pause. I don't know why. I guess it's just like because most games do that. And you can like craft potions, super potions, hyper potions, max potions, and just like remedies. Oh, and something that's important to note here is that um you can buy um and I'll show this off in uh in a minute, but you can buy um crafting recipes from a from a guy in like in town and I'll show him off and when I head back oh I didn't mean to press B okay let's go for a pokeball a pokeball probably works There's one more thing I want to show off before I head back to the camp and I want to catch this guy before I do that. You didn't see me, did you? No, he's not seeing me. I'm going to sneak behind him. Oh, come on. Yeah, it can be a bit annoying if they just randomly turn around and spot you. Anyway, I'm just gonna... Oh, I can't do that while I'm being... Okay. Ooh, don't want to jump off there because I'll automatically get onto the right Pokemon. Oh, wait. Any more of them to get? this camp here. So, one last thing I want to talk about before I head back to camp and uh, to show you the guy that you can get the crafting recipes from. Oh, crafting materials is always nice. I'm going to bother with you guys. Grab this. Nope. Grab that. Right. Oh, and also there's two types of Pokemon. There's Pokemon that are one run away from you if they see you, like that. And there's Pokemon that will attack you. So again, that's established in the tutorial. So this bridge, 
And um, basically, if you go to this bridge and then you have like a battle with a lass with a Munchlax, and then I believe, it, if I'm not wrong, once I'm gonna have to get on this, otherwise I'm gonna drown. Um, I believe once you've done that battle, um, then there is a uh, like horde. Um, Horde's gonna appear and basically, um, like, uh, randomly, like, anywhere in uh, his Hisui, random hordes of Pokemon can appear. Uh, well, a horde of random Pokemon that can randomly appear and they have an increased shiny rate. So, uh, bearing in mind that stacks with that, that increased shiny odds stacks with a completed Pokédex and a perfect, which stacks with, stacks with the perfect Pokédex, uh, but I doubt you'll have any perfect Pokédex, you're probably never gonna, not going to have any perfect Pokédexes by the time you, you can do this, but uh, essentially once you unlock the Horde battle, Horde Pokémon, you, you can essentially start shiny hunting because uh, all you need to do is find where the Horde is, and unfortunately I can't, there's no Horde, I would have loved to show this off but I've not been able to get any Hordes. Um, you can find the horde, save in front of them, um, knock them all out, and, and if you don't get a shiny, you get, um, also you'll want to turn autosave off to do this because autosave can screw you over with this, and then you know just like uh, close without saving, then we try and just keep trying again, and you have a decent odd, you have decent odds of getting a shiny. So, and you can do that within like the first few minutes of starting the game. So this is if you want to just like get into this game and like do your first own uh, Pokemon game with only shiny Pokemon I would definitely recommend starting with this just make it so that um, it, the challenge starts after you beat that skill with the uh, Munchlax uh, because you can't soft reset for shiny for a shiny starter unfortunately like I uh, mentioned earlier um, but yeah Uh, let me just send them over, and you get you get money for catching Pokemon in the door, uh, all that, which is very nice. So yeah, that's another way this um, game emphasizes catching Pokemon. Ooh, I almost uh, completed the uh, my chop decks. Oh, I need to defeat one, and then I completed it. Oh, I need to get out of here on the guard room so I can spam out to you up. And then that, 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 that's the point thing that I was talking about. Um, with uh, uh, ranking up. I'm going to have a quick drink. So this is the village. Got like, all the different shops they can buy stuff from. And if you go to this guy over here, you can buy crafting recipes from him and he sells uh, remedy, fine remedy, superb remedy, uh, which basically, um, if I remember correctly, they're basically the like bitter um, healing items that if you feed your Pokemon it'll heal them up but uh, at the cost of happiness. You can get the full heal recipe, you can get a max revive recipe, max ether, max elixir recipe, uh, you get sticky glob recipe, honey cake recipe, gr grain cake, bean cake, salt cake recipe, orcs power which I believe is just like X power, X guard, X, uh, not X power, X attack, X defense, um, X attack, X evasion, dire hit, and you get a recipe for star pieces that are crafted from three red shards, three blue shards, and three green shards, and one bag of stardust. And you get the shards from time space rifts, which are basically just like areas where you can get really rare items and really rare Pokemon, but really, all the Pokemon are really powerful. 
and they are actually quite powerful and can be a uh, tad bit difficult. Um, but more times than not, you're not really going to be spending much time here. Like you may like come back here to like resupply and stuff, but other than that, you're not really going to be here for much of the game. We're gonna buy. Gonna stock up on a bunch of healing items. And you can buy Max Survives for like the first time ever. And if you just want to buy what uh, you can buy special stuff from him. Medicinal circular saw. What the heck? Go. Sure. Yeah, so you can buy like berries and um, additional leaks and stuff like that from it, this guy here. And from this gentleman in here. Hold on. Oh, there's a cutscene I did not know of. Oh, spoiler character. Oh no. Um. If you don't want to know about, hold on actually, I'm going to quickly just I'll chip and recording. Okay, now that the spoilers have gone, you can talk to this gentleman over here. And he'll increase your satchel, the amount of items that you can carry. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything I want to talk about here. I've managed to avoid any real major spoilers, like, until I, I accidentally entered that cutscene, but, yeah, nothing too spoilery there, unfortunately. There's a little bit of a spoiler there, but, yeah, wouldn't recommend pausing to read that. Um... If you're trying to avoid spoilers. But yeah. So. So. People are probably going to ask this. But. What would I rate to Legends of Arceus out of 10? Now. Something important to understand. That when I rate anything. Really. Out of 10. Is that. I'll never give it a 10. Out of 10. Because. In my opinion, a 10 out of 10 is literally perfect, and in my opinion, there is no perfect game. Like, even The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, in my opinion, is a 9 out of 10. And, in my opinion, Pokemon Legends Arceus is 7 out of 10, maybe 7.5. It is really close to a 10. If you want to do halves, it's 7.5. It is really close to an 8, but... Um, the only thing that's really holding it back on becoming an 8 is some of the textures are quite flat. Shush. Some of the textures are quite flat and there's a couple of bugs and glitches here and there, but really it is a very good game and I would and if you enjoy Pokemon I would definitely recommend playing this or if you want to get into Pokemon. Um or if you like Monster Hunter because uh this is really Similar to Monster Hunter Rise, I believe it's called. The one that's on the Switch. Noisy bit. Whichever Monster Hunter's on the Switch. Um, 
but yeah. Um, oh, and I almost forgot. There are like side missions, but they're not really. For the most part, they're not really worth mentioning. There's one that gives you a free shiny ponytail. But other than that, none of them are like I remember are really that noteworthy. They're just like nice little world building that you can use to get um, Pokemon and resources and stuff like that. And it is nice to have them there, but uh, another problem is that you can only like select one at a time, so you can't just like, okay, where's all the ones that need me to be in X place? Okay, they all need me to be in X place, so I don't get them all done in, done in one go. Uh, no, you can't do that, you'll have to do them one at a time. Uh, but uh, the good thing is that if you have an item for a quest, you don't need to have that quest active to go and complete it. You just need the items in your inventory if you need to talk to someone or the Pokemon in your, um, or oh, I've captured the Pokemon and the Pokemon. If a quest requires you to catch a Pokemon, you don't need that Pokemon in your party. Excuse me, you don't need the Pokemon in your party to complete it, you just need the Pokemon. It can be in your party or it can be in your ranch, I believe it's called in this game, or your box or PC or whatever you want to call it. Um, Oh, that reminds me, something, a uh, nice little detail that is in this game that I'm going to show off real quick before I end this is um, when you have put uh, Pokemon in your like ranch boxes thing, um, some of them will actually appear out in this little field. field over here, so we can actually see like what Pokemon are out here today. I don't know how how often these change or what. It, wait, why is there no? The one time there's none of them there. Why is nothing there? Weird. I think. Hold on. Let me save. Lose the game. Reopen it. Maybe that'll, maybe that'll fix it. Oh, excuse me. It's when you, uh, if you like close the game and then open it, it does change the Pokemon's position, so maybe that'll work. Change what Pokemon are and are not out there. Loading, 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 loading. Hmm. Oh, well, anyway, if you have Pokemon in the. the um, boxes, they'll appear there sometimes. It's just not wanting to show off for me today. Um, oh, and something else I should also mention is that um, you can pay this woman up here. Hold on. Yeah. I'm running a little bit now. You run out of breath really quickly. This woman here, you can pay her to teach her Pokemon moves, but they won't learn that move when you pay here, what you have to do is you have to go to the Pokemon, you have to change moves, then you have to select the move that you want and switch it out. And you can do this as many times as you want. Like, um, if I wanted Calm Mind, I could like switch Calm Mind in for like Dazzling Gleam or Energy Ball or Psychic or whatever, and uh, or Shadow Ball or whatever, and then just like switch it back when I'm done. Which is handy. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, definitely recommend this game. Hope you guys all did enjoy this video. Hope to see you guys in the next video. And bye-bye.